following video module is on why private equity investors invest in private equity. Private equity can offer a range of advantages to private equity investors. These advantages include diversification of a portfolio, or absolute returns. Absolute returns refers to returns that are uh, that are able to beat the market, so to speak, or to beat an index such as the S&P index uh, or any other measurement. It suggests that the fund will be able to generate returns uh, that are positive no matter what the market does. Uh, and this is, of course, very attractive to investors who are tired of the downswings of the market that mutual funds or funds that peg their performance to an index uh, often will say, well, I lost less money than the S&P, for instance, uh, if you were following that index. So absolute returns rather than relative returns. Uh, another reason would be access to greater inside information and by this, I don't mean insider information that will lead to insider trading charges, of course. Uh, more I refer to the fact that you'll get on the ground floor of some interesting companies and you'll be able to see uh, more information that's pub than what is publicly available because your fund is investing in this firm that is uh, in this company that is private. Uh, whereas a public, a public firm will have to disclose all sorts of information and you'll be able to get uh, have a better understanding of these companies uh, because you're in on the ground floor. And another reason is the ability to fund entrepreneurs and high growth companies. This is really exciting for a lot of investors. This is really the joy of it is that they're able to fund some of the uh, latest startups or some companies that they're really uh, interested in. Uh, for instance, like Zipcar, if you were interested in that company, or Google, any of these big companies that you want to get on the ground floor of them and you want to be able to see them really flourish in the marketplace. So access to entrepreneurs and high growth companies. It's actually ability, ability to fund. And another reason is uh, you are able to have the opportunity to provide capital companies with the goal of turning around uh, struggling business. Like, for instance, TPG Group uh, may name for itself with the turnaround of Continental Airlines. And if you get some sort of satisfaction uh, from investing in companies that are really struggling or that you think you would be able to uh, you would like the opportunity to invest in a private equity fund that'll turn struggling companies around. Uh, you may get some satisfaction from that and that may be attractive to you uh, rather than, for instance, a venture capital fund that's more providing development capital or startup capital for uh, smaller companies that have not had a chance to prove themselves yet. If you want more experienced companies, you can also go for a buyout fund. So turn around. I'll just put that under that. And it also uh, fulfills different needs for different investors uh, in private equity. For instance, a government institution may partner with a private equity firm on occasion. Uh, yeah, you'll occasionally see this where governments uh, look to promote venture capital investment either through co-investments or fund of funds that provide capital to venture capital firms, uh, which is then distributed to growing companies and entrepreneurs. Uh, there's usually uh, a unique motive for government sponsoring a venture capital uh, and private equity, uh, such as to help stimulate the economy, uh, increasing job growth, or promoting the growth of a certain sector or industry. Uh, sometimes they do this with uh, so-called infant industries that need to develop. Uh, this is sort of similar to the government support of clean tech industry in uh, recent years. We've seen a lot of uh, government spending going towards that, sometimes in the form of sponsoring uh, investment funds that provide the actual capital. Uh, they might give breaks, but they might actually uh, co-invest co or, or provide capital through a fund of funds. Uh, another is uh, corporate priv private equity funds, like Google's fund, Google Venture. 
uh, Google Ventures, which often uh, seeks to provide capital to strategic partners. So the corporate private equity investments will help promote the corporation's interests. Uh, sometimes they'll do something that uh, aligns with their interests, but also might provide them a, a good return on their investment uh, if that if that investment is successful. Uh, institutional investors like endowment funds and pension funds are looking for long-term high returns to help boost their assets under management. Uh, you'll see this with, uh, as I said, pensions and endowments uh, and other institutional investors. Uh, they typically have a longer-term focus, and but lately we have observed a shift towards hedge funds uh, in their asset allocation. While some institutional investors believe, uh, which some inst institutional investors believe provide quicker returns and can profit more during vol volatility, like we've seen in the last few weeks. Uh, now, hedge funds often compete with private equity for endowment funds and pension funds allocations. Uh, this trend is likely forming because many institutional investors took heavy losses during the financial crisis and are looking to alternative investments to recoup some of those losses and to recoup it quickly. Uh, private equity funds are typically seen as longer term investments that may provide a steady, a steady return, but it could take years before the fund exits its investments. Due to the fact that endowments and pension funds are naturally long term perpetual investors, they're often a natural match for long term private equity funds. And this is why you see some of the institutional investors returning to private equity and looking for that long-term return on investment. Uh, so private equity still makes up a, a large percentage of many institutional investors' portfolios, and it still remains a very popular investment uh, for endowments and pension funds and other institutional investors. Uh, now I'm going to go through a couple reasons why you should not invest in private equity. Uh, and these are just some uh, common reasons that people might get into investing in private equity, and it's actually for the wrong reasons, I'll find out. Uh, and one of these is to invest in the next big startup. Uh, it's easy to get swept up in high growth companies like Google or Facebook and high, profi high profile IPOs like LinkedIn.com's recent IPO uh, you may have heard of. Uh, you might want to get in on the ground floor of these exciting companies that went from basement operations to multi-billion dollar companies. Uh, seemingly overnight. It feels that way when you're not actually providing the capital. But after all, a venture capital uh, fund that invested a few million to buy a stake in a startup could sell that, uh, that stake a few years later for billions of dollars. Uh, and if you if you just invested in that venture capital fund, then you'd get a cut of that money. However, for every great investment that makes a venture capital fund a high return, there's 10 investments or more that turned out not so great for the venture capital fund or the private equity fund. Uh, so it's important to consider why you're investing and be sure that you're not just looking to partner with a fund that will find the next, uh, the next Google or the next Facebook, because although those are very exciting companies and it may seem like they've just overnight become a quick success, uh, actually took years of investment and years of making other investment choices that may not have panned out so well. So it's important you have the right idea when you're going into an investment. Uh, another reason not to invest in private equity is if you're trying to get rich quick. Uh, many people see the headlines regarding private equity and alternative investments as generating uh, enormous returns uh, to their investors and many people have been successful uh, in their private equity investing and they have generated uh, high returns for their funds and their clients have benefited, but that is not always the case. And if you're investing in private equity, you're already an incredible investor and, it's, and or an institutional investor already. But if you're considering private equity because you heard about the returns that TPG Group or Blackstone Group or Carlyle uh, generated recently, and you want to make a lot of money as a limited partner to one of those funds, uh, you'll find a few things. A it's difficult to invest in top private equity funds because they're often very very selective of their investors. Unlike a lot of smaller private and mid-market mid private equity funds that sort of have to uh, persuade uh, private equity investors to invest in them, these top private equity firms often have their pick of the litter and they have investors that are sort of banging on the door trying to get access to these top private equity managers. Uh, B, 
the best private equity funds often impose stricter rules like longer lockup periods or a very high minimum investment that you may not be comfortable with and you may not be suited for uh, working with these top private equity funds. Uh, finally, C, these funds will not get you rich overnight. Private equity investments are long-term and there is no promise that you will get have an outstanding ROI or even a positive ROI. Uh, for these reasons, you should do a great deal of due diligence before investing in a fund and check with a qualified financial or legal advisor before making any investment decisions. Uh, this is important to note because there is a lot of due diligence that should go on before you invest in a private, a private equity fund or any fund. Uh, you should definitely do your homework. And we provide some other videos that give you some tips and training on doing due diligence before you invest in a private equity fund. Uh, I hope that this provided you with a good explanation of why investors choose to invest in private equity and why you should not invest in private equity if the, you're pursuing it for the wrong reasons. The preceding video should not be interpreted as financial advice and you should always consult with a qualified financial advisor before making any inv investment decision. All right, thank you for your time.